I've fallen in with a really weird group on the internet. Because I've taken up full contact medieval combat. <laughs> Let me explain the reaction in the room. Most of you are thinking about reenactment right now. <laughs> it is not reenactment. Reenactment is done by a really diverse group of white men called Keith. <laughs> Hello to the Keiths. <laughs> Whereas what I do is basically mixed martial arts team on team in a full suit of armor with real weapons. It's insane. You can win by knockout. <laughs> right? And like people who, when you tell them there's the same questions come all the time, they're like, well, who does this sport? Um, well, I'd say the people who are attracted to it, uh, because it really does hurt when you get hit. So the guys that do it are people who haven't fully accepted what they're really into is BDSM. <laughs> Like they go, mm, that hurt, I hope it doesn't happen again. <laughs> I also discovered that chivalry does not exist. Chivalry is not a thing, right? The first fight I ever saw between two men in armor ended after 10 seconds when one of them ran across the arena and dick punted the other one. <laughs> you ever heard a man whimper in a helmet? <laughs> Sounds like someone lost a dolphin in a cave. <laughs> the, the last thing people ask very reasonably is, uh, is it safe? Here's a total random aside for no reason. I don't even know why I'm bringing this up. <laughs> Guys, how good is the NHS? Oh, no, I missed a joke, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, that happened uh, when someone punched me in the face and the crossbar of a sword went in through the eye sockets of the helmet I was wearing and tore into my eyebrow. Yeah, that is a really difficult injury to explain in A&E. <laughs> um, the only thing that it... Uh, it, it Sorry. Uh, the reason is I'm stumbling is because I missed the slide and I know that there's a callback later on, so we're going to have to go back. <laughs> Flawless, McGarry. It's not like it's the biggest stage you've ever done. <laughs> so very quickly, there were a couple of other ways of getting into a castle that I have thrown out. Right? That you just now you're all going to be like, which which the one that he's calling back to? <laughs> Um, there's a couple of other ways that you can get into a castle, but genuinely, if you want to know how to get into a castle, the most successful way is a siege, yeah? That's the most successful way. You, you just gather loads of food and you sit around and wait. But I didn't think theatrically you'd like to see a show where I just stood here with a sandwich going... <laughs> Give up! <laughs> um, the, the really successful way of getting into a castle was to attack before the Renaissance. Because in the Renaissance, they invented perspective. Um, and it was... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, this is a really difficult injury to explain in A&E. It's sort of like, how did the injury occur? I was hit in the head with a sword. Did he take you by surprise? No. <laughs> Were you not wearing any protection? Yes. <laughs> a full suit of armor. All right, uh, well, let's, let's have a look at the rest of the form. Uh, what did you say you do for a job again? I'm a stand-up comedian archaeologist. <laughs> you should probably check the room for hidden cameras. <laughs> There's only one thing harder to explain in A&E than this injury, and that is when two months later, you do it again. A <laughs> couple of things about this one that people always ask is, one, uh, why are you smiling so much on both of those pictures? That is the face of a comedian who knows he doesn't have to try too hard for an Edinburgh show. <laughs> the other thing people pointed out, or um, uh, some of you may have noticed, evidence gatherers you know, amongst you, that's the opposite eye. I have now got two sword injuries in the 21st century. <laughs> I've got two sword injuries which are scarring, which means that I have two scars on either side of my head that make it look like I'm quoting my eyes.
this is an interesting part of the show because in all of my blurbs in Edinburgh, I warn people that there would be blood. However, I have to give another warning now. If anyone's a bit squeamish, there's another injury that I have cropped out from this picture and I'm about to show you. So if anyone, yep, there it goes. Um, <laughs> there's always one person who just goes, no, <laughs> looks down away. Uh, because I also discovered on that day what happens when you try and block a sword with your hand. <laughs> now the smile makes even less sense. I thought this was a dislocation, and it wasn't until I got to the, the Whittington Hospital that I found out it wasn't, and I found out it wasn't dislocated in the worst way possible. Because I got into the x-ray department, and the professional radiographers, who look at injuries every single day, saw my image coming up on the screen and just went, oh, it's just popping up, oh no. <laughs> for anyone who's feeling sorry for me, don't, right? Because that injury meant that I got to try morphine for the first time. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that is a hell of a drug, isn't it? I did not know your hands and feet could come. <laughs> You're still not looking up, are you? <laughs> no. Don't, no, 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 no. People have told me that even this is too hard to look at, so don't worry. For you people, I have recreated it in breadsticks. <laughs> Very silly show. <laughs> God, I'm sweating so much. <laughs> uh, what you don't know about armor when you, you start doing a show in it is that the lights make you sweat so hard, you start rusting your armpits. <laughs> I've had to use WD-40 like it's body spray. <laughs> I had to get an operation to fix this all out. Um, the, if anyone's wondering, it's this one. You can see it's working perfectly fine, if anyone's wondering. Uh, the only thing is that uh, it now hurts in bad weather. <laughs> yeah, I've basically become an old sea captain. Just <laughs> storms brewing. <laughs> so <laughs> I, uh, uh, I had to have an operation to have it all fixed. Uh, they had to put pins in, straighten it all out, all that kind of stuff. And they knocked me out for a general anesthetic, and they gave me a list at the end of that of things I was not allowed to do for 24 hours. It's just the best list I've ever seen. It can't even be improved with catapults, guys. It's amazing. Because <laughs> um, number one on the list of things you're not allowed to do for 24 hours is you are not allowed to drive a car. Very reasonable. Seems fair. Number two on the list is you're not allowed to operate any machinery. Again, very reasonable, but the example they gave was kettle. <laughs> but my favorite one out of all of them uh, was this one. Uh, for 24 hours, you are not allowed to make any important decisions or sign any documents. <laughs> I don't know what they thought I was going to do. Like, I was going to leave there and just be like, I want to buy a house. <laughs> I am a millennial. I have never had that thought. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, this really annoyed me. I was like, don't, don't tell me how to live my life. I went out of my way to try and find ways to break this in 24 hours. And it ended up with me um, voting in the local elections. <laughs> I don't remember how I voted. That's a terrifying feeling to like, have completely lost. Like, that's a feeling that I think few of you may have uh, been more aware of. Like, as, as things like the digital world gets into our real world a little bit more, that ab ability to do things online that you regret is more there. C how many people here have drunk shopped? Yes, the rest of you are liars. <laughs> I've only ever drunk shopped once, and it was the same feeling as that, and it was horrible. Uh, I'll never do it again because I woke up the next day to find it in my... You know that feeling when you wake up and you're like, <gasps> who was I last night? <laughs> and why did I need all of that Play-Doh? It was like that, but worse, because I woke up to find a receipt in my inbox for an American Civil War hat, <laughs> but it didn't say which side. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had to wait to find out if you're racist by post before. 